Ah, uh, yes. Pawn to king four. The age old question. Okay, you know it is pawn to e4. We don't talk like we're in the 19th century anymore, but the question does remain what do we do about it? Probably you learned double king pawn at some point. Maybe you even branched out and learned the Sicilian. But you know what? There's a lot of openings where you push upon one square. And today, let's look at one of those openings. One of the favorites of Anatoly Karpov, which is the Karo Khan, pawn to c6. But before we get going, learning all about this opening, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Just in case I do more opening videos, you're gonna to wanna to know about them. Okay, now pawn to c6. Of course, it does help develop the queen. That's not its main feature. We are aiming at the center of the board. And no matter what white does, black will play d5 on the next turn, unless black is playing something super weird, but that would not be the Karo Khan. Now I'm going to suggest that white play the move d4. It is the, obviously the way to get the snowplow. That's what you're supposed to do when your opponent lets you. And black always plays the move pawn to d5. We have reached the critical stage already on move three. Well, it's not critical as in you're gonna win or lose, but you have to decide what kind of pawn structure you like. There's basically three main ideas for white. White can push, white can defend, both of these knight moves defend the pawn, they're both playable, and white can also take. Let's briefly talk about all three and I'll also give you my suggestion in case you're playing white against the Karo Khan. Now, first of all, pushing, I think is a little bit easier to play for black unless you really know what you're doing. Now, please don't write to us and say that pawn e5 is losing. It is not. A lot of great players play the advanced variation. But in the Karo Khan, one of the goals of black is to get this bishop out before playing the move e6. And so black, pretty much always in this position, plays the move bishop to f5. And what we end up having here is a French defense type position. Notice when the pawn comes to e6, it's a little bit like a French. Now the advantage for black is that the bishop will not be in jail, he won't be back here behind the pawn, he'll be out of jail when the pawn comes to e6. But black will still play the move c5 and try to break down the center. So when white develops the knight, black will play the move e6 and black is gonna play the typical things in the French defense where he plays c5, knight c6, queen b6, and tries to take over this d4 pawn. And of course, if black gets rid of that pawn, then the other center pawn would be a weak. Totally playable for white, but you have to know what you're doing a little bit in the advanced variation. Okay, white can also defend the pawn. White can move the knight to c3 or the knight to d2. It's actually called the Tarash when you play knight to d2. And don't be confused, there's actually other openings named the Tarash. There's even a semi-Tarash. Are you confused? Well, I don't have time to unconfuse you. I just want to show you what happens when the knight develops. Black often takes this pawn on e4, oh. and when the knight takes, black has to go after this knight because the knight is so well placed. Black sometimes offers a knight trade. Of course, if the trade happens, black has to give himself double pawns, but black can also play this move bishop to f5. And when the knight runs away, and then the bishop runs away to safety, I find that this pawn structure is exactly what black wants in the Karo Khan, because black will play e6 later on to help the dark sword bishop get out. That pretty much means this pawn on d4 is stuck forever. It's never gonna be able to move forward because there's gonna be two black pawns aiming at that square. And this pawn is on a half open file. Black is gonna put rooks and queens on the d file, maybe even play c5 and knight c6. And after all of those moves, it's actually white's pawn that is a target. It's not that easy to identify what is black's target. So white does have more space and again, Please don't write to us and say that black is somehow winning. I just find that Karo Khan players tend to prefer this kind of pawn structure because they get into it every game and they kind of know some plans. All right, let's go all the way back to this critical moment. And now for my advice. In fact, let's invert the chessboard in case somebody plays the Karo Khan against you. What do I teach here to my students? Well, I teach the exchange variation because when you play pawn ticks, oh. The pawn always takes back because black wants to keep a flag planted in the center. And now I just have one thing I want you to remember in this position if you play white. Just try to keep the light square bishop from getting to a good square. What do I mean by that? Well, if you play them with knight f3, which in any other opening seems totally logical, it allows the bishop to come all the way to g4 and pin your knight. And even if the bishop ends up taking the knight, Black is not unhappy about losing the bishop here because black can play e6 and cover up all of his light squares with pawns and actually get a pretty good position. Black also, by the way, is gonna go after this pawn. Black's gonna play knight c6, and then suddenly your queen is trying to guard the pawn and the knight, and of course the knight is pinned, and black is getting a reasonable game. Let's go back. 
We've already ruled out knight f3, but you know what? The bishop has a good backup square, which is bishop f5. So the correct move in this position is to play bishop to d3. So clearly the bishop can't come to f5. And of course, if it comes to g4, there's no pin. There's just thank you very much for the free bishop. So let's continue on. Black might play the move knight c6. And again, the normal way to defend this pawn is to move our knight to the happy square. But you already remember, bishop g4 is a very annoying pin. So in this position, let's guard our d-pawn with a pawn. Pawn to c3 is the main line, okay? Now black should continue developing, knight to f6. And if you're white, again, we're just holding back on this normal move. We're not playing knight f3. Instead, we need another developing move. If this knight develops right away, it blocks the bishop. So let's develop the dark squared bishop, bishop to f4. In fact, we are following a theoretical line and we're also following a game that Fun Master Mike played recently on my show, Beat Fun Master Mike. And black has a critical decision here. Black needs to continue developing the bishops. But if black plays the move e6 to help this bishop out and get the king out of the middle by castling, then this bishop is in jail forever. In fact, there's a lot of light squared attacks that will happen once black's king castles because this bishop will be lined up with h7 and this bishop on c8 will never be able to defend the king's side. So in the particular game that I played recently, black played the move bishop to g4 getting the bishop outside the pawn chain before playing e6. But now something funny has happened. Since the bishop has come to the king's side, the bishop is no longer guarding the queen's side, so I play queen b3 to go after this weak pawn. And black made an error. Black should probably guard the pawn with queen c8. That is a playable move, and black is okay. But black played the somewhat reasonable looking b6. Ah, but when you put pawns on dark squares, you weaken the squares beside them, which happen to be light squares. Now, everybody watching this is probably thinking, I know, Fun Master, you play bishop b5. I could have, but you know what? This is one of those times where you want to keep the threat in your pocket. Because if you play bishop b5, this bishop could actually get smart and run back to the queen side and break the pin and defend the knight. So I played a totally normal developing move. I waited for black to play e6 to get this bishop out. Ah, but now this bishop can't go back. So I sort of delayed it and played the move bishop to b5. What would we call that in basketball? A stutter step? I don't know. I'll have to call Allen Iverson. We're calling this the Allen Iverson. Allen, please take this as a badge of honor and do not try to sue us. Okay, bishop to b5, attacking the knight. And actually, it's just winning. I'm winning this knight. Black decided to defend. I put PP on the PP by making a battery. Black only had one way to defend, which is rook c8. All I need now is a third piece to attack that knight. And luckily, I have to get a knight to e5, and I've got two knights that can go to f3. Obviously, I chose the undeveloped knight. And whether my opponent takes this knight or not, I got a backup knight, and I'm getting a knight to e5. There is nothing my opponent can do. In the actual game, my opponent took, I took back. The knight is definitely coming to this square. Black tried this move. Now, if I play knight e5, he will very happily get rid of my knight. But what I did was trade the bishops. And after queen takes, now knight to e5. And it is 1-0 GG, as my friend, the chess Jedi, would say. The knight's attacked three times. It's guarded twice. It cannot be guarded a third time. And the opening was a big success for white. Of course, this is not forced. But try to play that exchange variation. I think that'll give you the best chances against the Karo Khan. If you're looking for something to play as black, that's not the standard E4, E5 lines. It is a unique pawn structure. You might want to kick the tires on the old Karo.